since you ladies host a real life murder mystery podcast, Scene of the Crime, we thought we would start our first topic with a young woman named Bailey Sarian. I think I'm saying her name right. And she's got a YouTube titled True Crime and Makeup. And <laughs> she basically does her makeup while she's talking about crimes that have happened. I wanted to see what you ladies thought of this. You know, I actually just watched her for the first time the other day, and I am a huge fan now. I mean, <laughs> just after watching a couple of videos, it feels like, I don't know if you remember, you know, high school, college years, when you're getting ready for a party, you're mm -hmm. with your girlfriends, putting on your makeup, and you're talking about whatever comes to mind, you know, could be something in the news, like a murder that happened. Yeah. I mean, that's totally the vibe I get. And I think especially right now, you know, with the lockdowns and everything, it just feels really good to be like hanging out with your girlfriend. I feel like I've been putting my uh, concealer on all wrong for like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, I finally learned the secret. There's a lot of dabbing happening. She has a deft hand in being funny, but then also the seriousness of the crimes and the storytelling. I mean, she's a great storyteller. I think that you, you just, you put, you pinned it right there. She's really deft at saying, at doing that and, and being respectful about it too. Yeah, She's not absolutely. making fun of anyone. She's being very respectful of the victims, but also telling the story. I think it is interesting that women are highly interested in true crime and murder mystery. I have my own reasons and I've heard certain things. Why do you ladies think that is? women tend to be the victims of these crimes. And so we want to know what's out there, what the possibilities are, what to protect ourselves against and, you know, what we can do to be safer. And I think that women are super like empathic and, and, and sympathetic and they want to know what happened. I mean, I know just from my own experience, you know, I'm always coming back to, you know, what happened? Who are these people? How can we learn, learn from it? And I think that that really, um, especially the podcasting format, it's so intimate and, and you really get to know the stories and you, and I think that we're all just, you know, we're looking for connections. And I think that however we can find them, especially these days, like there is, no, I mean, I, it has been, you know, a solve for me to be able to, um, or salve rather to, to just yeah. Get out of it. Get out of my own head. There's no politics. I look for podcasts, true crime podcasts that don't have any politics because I just am like, I'm on overload. So I can definitely see how it's a form of escapism. It's funny though, for me, ever since having children, I haven't been able to watch. I used to love Dateline. I was a Dateline junkie. Me and Keith Morrison, we were like this. <laughs> and I can't, I can't watch it anymore. And I, you know, I, I love, I, I think Keith Morrison is an excellent journalist. I just can't watch his stuff anymore. It's just too much. I, I'm going to listen to you ladies though, because. Oh, good. Because <laughs> I think, you know, I think it'll be a little more digestible. So let's switch from famous people to fashion. Yeah. And we're talking 2021 inaugural fashion. What were your favorites? Well, I have to say I've got my jewel tones going on in homage yeah. to all the lovely ladies who were at the inauguration. I think my favorite, though, was actually President Biden's grandchildren. They had the monochromatic theme going on, and they all just looked, I don't know, so sleek and stylish and so Ooh. mature for their age. And the coats they wore, you know, the long, like, knee-length coats with yes. then the knee-high boots that matched. It was so understated and elegant. I just, I loved it. And especially from their age group. They weren't trying to upstage their grandpa. They were trying to be there to support him. And that really showed through even in their fashion. Oh my gosh. Well, I'm, I'm wearing my power belt right now because I'm sure Kim can attest. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I am like, <laughs> you know, I mean, when I saw Michelle Obama, I was just ready to get on my knees. I'm still thinking about it. I just love the color. I love the power belt. My kids will, whenever, you know, sometimes when I go out, when I used to get dressed up, you know, before COVID, you mm -hmm. know, and I'd be wearing one of my belts and they'd be like, okay, mom's going, mom's got her power belt on. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I do. And Lady Gaga with that just everybody oh just seemed like gosh. they were just she having just they were so dumb. proud to be there they were so just proud and happy to be there so i think yeah. that the fashion and the color and just the patriotism it just really really bled through well i have to say i did love michelle obama's outfit it was yeah. so gorgeous and if you looked each one of those tones they were all white it was like it looked like the same color but they were all slightly a little bit different yeah. which i thought yeah. was incredible my favorite outfit, though, I loved what the young poet laureate wore, Amanda Gorman. She had that beautiful yellow, bright yellow coat, and then that red headband. 
it was so bold and it was really pretty. And she reminded me just, it just was so bright and refreshing. Yes, absolutely. And it so fit with her poem that she delivered. I mean, it was, yes. it was powerful. It was hopeful. I mean, it was yeah. exactly, exactly what she should have worn. But I think honestly, the one person who stole the show, and I, I know you'll agree with me, was uh, Bernie Sanders and his amazing <laughs> mittens that are taking over the internet. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and they've now gotten their own name, Bernie Mittens. I mean, you know, he, <laughs> they were branded without him even doing anything. It's pretty incredible. <laughs> Bernie Mittens, indeed. All right, if you're a fan of true crime, stay tuned because Kim and Carolyn are going to be back with an update on a local cold case. So earlier in the show, we chatted with Kim and Carolyn from the Scene of the Crime podcast. Well, after our round of hot topics, they gave us an update on a local cold case. Check it out. So Karen Bodine was a mother from Lacey who was murdered in 2007. Her daughter, Carly Bodine, was only 18 years old when her mother was murdered, but she immediately launched this investigation that has been going on ever since. And she's been working so hard to keep this case in the minds of the investigators and in the minds of the public. And it's been a little bit of an uphill battle because of the situation her mom was in when she went missing and was found murdered. She um, had been in a relationship, had a bad breakup, ended up having to leave the apartment that she had shared with her boyfriend. And so she was out on the street by herself when she was last seen and you know, there was some feeling that, oh, this is a drug addict, this is a transient. And so possibly the case didn't get quite as much coverage, quite as much interest as it might have gotten otherwise. But her daughter Carly says, you know, yeah, my mom had, you know, a, a battle with addiction, but that's not who she was. That wasn't the entirety of her person. And she was a loving mother. She was a wonderful person. This shouldn't have happened to her. And so she's been really fighting to get this case solved. It's remained unsolved since 2007. Um, and she's been starting to make some progress. We actually just learned, and you're the first to hear this, that the case has been taken on by the FBI. Wow. And according to Carly, they have some genetic genealogy efforts that are now happening. I did reach out to the FBI. Of course, they can't say anything about active investigations. Right. But the fact that they tell me we can't talk about this means obviously it is an active investigation. So it's great news to hear that they have the FBI on board. This is something that you know hasn't happened in 13 years. So we're so grateful that Carly has continued to speak up for her mom and continue to try to shed light on her case so that so that this could happen. No, oh, that's incredible. I have the chills right now hearing this story about it just it's so great to hear about this young lady's perseverance and such such a horrible, awful thing to happen. 